Ever walked through an art gallery and thought, is this considered art? Well, you're not alone. And the reason for this is worse than you can imagine. Art is one of the biggest tax cut assets the rich use to benefit themselves. Let's uncover how they utilize this trick to reduce their owed taxes by sometimes 100%, while they don't actually need to spend the entire amount they're getting it reduced. Many often wonder how the rich manage to pay less taxes than everyone else while earning so much more. They make the rules so you better know they put things in place to benefit themselves. There are many avenues to reduce taxes, most of which are unavailable to people who don't earn above a certain threshold, and unfortunately that's roughly 90% of the population. Art is one of these things that goes under the radar for most, but is actually one of the largest tax cut options out there, and it's far less complex to utilize than you'd imagine. It's actually quite simple. You buy art, get it appraised, and donate it to a non-profit organization like a museum, university, or cultural institution. And then, you can reduce your taxes by the value of the artwork. Of course I further simplified it, but in broad strokes this is it. The interesting thing here, is that you don't get to reduce your taxes by what you bought the piece for, but rather the fair market value. Meaning it will compare to other pieces that were sold, and the price will be based on that. Now this is where an appraiser comes in and sees what value a specific piece would have to know how much you can reduce your taxes. Usually, if you bought it for more than it's appraised for, then your taxes will be reduced by how much you bought it for, but if it's appraised higher, you can reduce your taxes by the full appraised value in most cases. Now that we understand how it works, it's easy to see why some pieces that are considered art are actually just tax write-offs, displayed right in front of us as a taunt to show how they did it, but we can't. These pieces of art are simply there to benefit someone who is richer than most of us could ever imagine, with rules that were put in place by the very people that exploit it. But how did it come to be like this? Well, in the early 20th century, a federal income tax was introduced with the passage of the 16th Amendment in 1913. But this has limited provision for deductions related to charitable contributions. What followed was the Revenue Act of 1917 that introduced specific deductions for charitable contributions, allowing taxpayers to deduct from their taxable income the value of donations made to organizations. Then came the Internal Revenue Code of 1954, which is the basis for much of the current U.S. tax law, further clarified and expanded the provisions related to charitable deductions. It set the framework for how taxpayers should claim deductions for donations to qualified tax-exempt organizations. Over the years, Various amendments to the tax code and regulations have refined the rules for charitable deductions. The rules governing the donation of appreciated assets, such as art, have been periodically updated and clarified. As the picture is starting to take shape, the pit appears even deeper than we initially thought. Anyone can start a non-profit, and of course, almost every single wealthy person has one or more in their name. They are seen as philanthropists, when in fact, they're just reducing their taxes with a fancy name behind it. While there are strict rules around this, the nonprofit doesn't solely rely on them to operate and support, it will actually receive donations from the public in many cases. Meaning that they get to reduce their taxes and have their nonprofits operated without requiring them to spend nearly that much money. I'm going to go off on a small side tangent here, but have you ever noticed donation boxes in businesses? You might think this is quite innocent and a gesture of goodwill. But this is actually again one of those things used to reduce taxes. Charitable donations can reduce your taxes further. By giving your money to the donation box of a business, they can actually claim that money as donated by them, therefore reducing their taxes even further. This is just another one of those sneaky practices very few know about. But now you do. So next time you see a donation box, be wary, because in most cases you're losing taxed money to a business that will use that money to simply reduce the taxes they owe. To come back to the nonprofits, rich people generally know each other as they go to similar gatherings and places. So it's not entirely uncommon for them to donate to each other's fundraisers. Helping each other reduce taxes with one of the easiest to game systems if you know how it is played. While there is always some cost attached to it, the potential upside is always larger than that cost to participate for them. There are of course penalties for abuse and it has happened in the past that the IRS or other regulatory authorities impose fines on individuals or organizations for various violations.
but the benefit outweighs the potential downside for these people. And in most cases, they'll have a bunch of accountants and lawyers overlook every single action they want to do to make sure that it's all legal. It's sad to see that, in some cases, millions of dollars that could be going to education, healthcare, or better infrastructure is actually going to places that only benefit a small portion of the population. We see the top 1%, who now have the same amount of money as the bottom 40% combined. And this will sound even worse. The top 10% has almost double the amount of money compared to the rest of the population. That's 10% of the population having as much as two times of the other 90%. It makes sense that the people who earn the money want to keep the money though. I don't think anyone is thrilled about giving any of their income to taxes. Now it's obvious why most people won't ever be able to utilize these types of tax deduction strategies, as they are simply not feasible to apply unless you earn exorbitant amounts of money every year. And while I'm not advocating for giving all your money to the government, I do see frustration among people that end up paying over 50% of their income to taxes, when others that are far richer simply pay nothing. This is also why the Tax the Rich movement makes very little sense. As you're not taxing them the right way, you could take away 100% of their taxable income. But in reality, there is never any income to tax, as it's all reduced to the minimum via any deductions they can exploit. In return, they pay high amounts of money in lawyer and accountant fees, and this again, just outweighs the losses they would see from paying more in taxes. It's almost like a game, to see who can reduce their taxes the most without getting faulted on any of the transactions they make. Now that we've unraveled how this system of art donations is abused, I hope I helped you realize that what people are using as talking points during political debates is all just shiny words with no real meaning. They can't tax the rich without removing the exploits that were set in place decades ago, and it's debatable whether having them pay the taxes owed will make any notable impact because governments aren't exactly known for their goodwill towards the people they serve. We call it corruption in underdeveloped countries, but here it's simply stamped with the name, lobbying, when in fact it's the same thing. Pay people enough money to get them on your side, and they'll make sure you have a smooth ride. It's a tough pill to swallow, but it also means that if they can do it, you can do it too. It's time to wake up and realize that there is a bigger game in play here. They are toying with us because we're uneducated about finances. And they want to keep it that way. There is a reason they don't teach us how taxes work in school. Because the dumber we are, the more they stand to gain. Having a smart population isn't in their best interest because it's the bottom 90% of people that pay the most in taxes. So they want us to focus on things that don't matter instead. But eventually it'll crumble as it always has. We can see it in our history, through what were once great empires and countries that have since faded in our past, and have been taken over by other rulers. It's important to note that this is a complex tax matter and unique for every country. So if you're interested in learning more about it, I implore you to investigate the matter further, as it can be quite interesting to know all about how legal tax evasion is possible. While I do not encourage anyone to try and evade taxes, using the legal options is a great way to keep as much money to yourself as possible. Thank you for watching. Before you leave, check out Cash Crusade, a financial education mobile game that was just released. Links for iOS and Android are in the description. If you like the content, please like the video and subscribe. Don't forget to let me know what you think of using art to reduce taxes for the rich, and if you had that kind of money, would you participate? Until next time, may your pursuits always paint a brighter financial picture.